welcome back to my channel as you guys can tell by the title i have a special guest we oh. haven't had you <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had a guest here on the channel in a while you know like a, co a collab yeah. guest so it's nice to finally have somebody and not talk to myself the whole time <laughs> also we both have reached 20k on instagram so if you are not following us what are you doing with your life what ma'am <laughs> so today we're going to be eating some noodles this is a black pack of noodles so this is like spicy noodle vibes we haven't mixed the sauce in yet i was like let's just mix it well we can mix it now <laughs> it smells good it smells really it really smells good. amazing so this is the black packet well, my, my mouth is, my mouth is watering already <laughs> you know like when you look at mango pickle and you're like mm, it's like mm. this oh my word it smells good. Oh, it smells so good. My my jaw is even like ugh, getting tight. Okay, so today we're gonna be doing a mukbang and we're going to be spilling some impromptu spontaneous tea. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. hopefully we can serve you guys with some spicy stuff. And if you guys would like to see more mukbangs from us, because I think we both love to eat. Yeah, we love eating all the time. And we don't live that far from each other. Yeah. So. We can just eat we can just on camera eat and live our best lives. Yeah. Do you think we should talk about like controversial stuff, like that twelve-year-old situation? What twelve-year-old situation? Where they were blaming the twelve-year-old for running. Oh over. yes, yes. I think. Okay, first let's have okay. one mouthful. I don't like eating noodles on camera. But I'm just gonna do. It. I shouldn't have put that on my lips. I know it burns your lips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it tastes good. Mm -hmm. It's yummy. It's <clears throat> hot. It but it's hot. Good. Do you watch Hot Ones? No. It's a but show on, you, on, on YouTube. You, oh yes, I watched the one yeah. with Zac Efron. So, I feel like I would do so good at that show. But my problem is, when I eat something hot, my nose just leaks. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'll just be there like... A snot ball, which I hope that doesn't happen today because that's not going to be good. Oh, my nose always leaks. <laughs> okay. My nose doesn't need a reason to leak. Here we go. <laughs> Thumbnail wiping noses and chins. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, I think a lot of us who have logical sense mm -hmm. would agree with the fact that we cannot blame a 12 year old for running away with a 34 year old. 100%. I, so when I read the articles, it was saying things like, this guy was, so this is what we know from the articles. This guy was supposedly her neighbor, and he manipulated the fact that she was being verbally abused at home. Now, I don't know about you guys, but growing up in Indian families, sometimes your mother will say shit to you that she obviously doesn't mean like you're so lazy or you stupid thing or something mm, like that you dumbass yeah <laughs> it doesn't mean <laughs> it doesn't mean like obviously it's bad like we know this generation knows that's not how it should be done mm. but the older generation they don't necessarily know how to be sensitive to things like this mm. so i feel like maybe that was taken out of context and my sister is 12 so i don't see my sister approaching someone and saying stuff. I can see someone maybe, and if you do this, I will come and find you and kill you. Uh, <laughs> I can maybe see like an adult saying something to a 12 year old and the 12 year old is like, okay, this is an adult. They can be trusted. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't think it's fair to blame the child. And I was reading comments on, I think it's Indian Spice's Facebook page. And an Indian lady, okay, it doesn't matter what race she was, but a lady commented, this child also needs one, two thick ones. And then everyone was going in on this lady. She's like, they were like, as a woman, how can you even say this? Mm. It's abuse towards a female and here you are blaming the female. Mm -hmm. We're saying men must stop blaming females. Like, it's not our fault that we're getting raped, but here you are saying that it's the girl's fault. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's, it just... It's so messed up. And my sister made a, um, also a really good point. Like, my nephew is 11. He doesn't know anything. They're innocent at 11 and 12. Yeah. Your is 12. Like, they were just running around here now. And Sanesh yeah. like, stop running And I'm here. like, guys, I need a phone. Please stop running. <laughs> like, they don't know anything. The fact that people would even go to the extent... And I've had mm. people in my DM say, why didn't she know better? Please explain to me, you at 12 years old, what would you have known? What would you have done in that situation? 
You wouldn't have known any better. I mean, I was 12. I was just figuring out my body because I just got my period at that age. Yeah, and I, was I was like, 10. I, like, I don't know what to do with myself. It's so I was weird. 10 and I got my period and I was still like innocent, not thinking anything of it because I didn't know what was going on with my body. I just knew like, oh, what do I do? When you first got your period, where were you? I just got home from school and I went to the bathroom. I also just got home from school and went to the bathroom and then I had to give my uniform away. Yeah, I had to, I was wearing like my tracksuit for school that I was wearing like, I think I went for athletics also. So I came back for my athletics, which is why I was wearing my tracksuit and I had to give it away. Yeah, I was also, but like, what you learn in school is that a period means blood. Mm. So maybe TMI, but when I went to the bathroom, it wasn't red, like, red you assume mm-hmm. blood to be red so i don't know what was going on and my auntie was at home so i started screaming and then she's like what's going on so i'm like there's something i don't know and then she's like okay i think you got your period can you yeah. like here's the egg throw your clothes away or whatever <laughs> well my mother actually told me because i started getting boobs early oh. am I? so you know you you know when you start like developing yeah people notice and yes then aunties will talk and they'll be like oh it's this one's time just Nana, now she got <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so people will say that stuff and I used to always hear it and be like I don't know what they're talking yeah. about they're just talking about me but I don't know about what and my mother would say to me if you see anything weird just call me just let me know but I didn't know what was going to happen if yeah. I saw something weird so that's just how it happened for me like you don't know anything it's so bad like talking about boobs I was looking at a photo of me I think it was at my auntie's wedding mm. and I was probably 9 or 10 and I was wearing like a normal Indian outfit but there was like two like granadillas it's so weird i was like i see it's so embarrassing it's like oh my god i saw two (laughs) pictures from back then and i'm like why didn't y'all put a bra on me yeah it's like like, what the heck so when you think of it i think people who don't have younger kids around them maybe they find it hard to empathize but at the same time it's logical sense you guys there is such a thing as grooming Mm -hmm. there is such a what is it called Yes, sexual grooming sexual grooming and i think also sorry to cut you off i think people think because of this digital age we live in, that everyone's child is online and mm. everyone's child is Advanced fast or forward fast, or whatever. Yeah. Not everyone is like that. Mm-mm. Like, I'm sure your sister does the same thing. Do they have phones? Nope. My sister got a phone recently. My mother checks it. I check it. She's not allowed to have a phone in bed. She's not allowed to have a phone after seven. My mother knows everyone that's on her phone. And she downloaded a new game recently because my cousin was here. So my mother was like, why didn't you tell me about this game? You didn't even ask me and now you have a new game. Mm. Let me see. Can you chat online? And she's like, yes, you can. So my mother's like, okay, you're only allowed to chat to your cousins. Mm. So I don't think, yes, to a certain extent, you can't shelter your child from everything. Mm. But I don't think that every child, because there's social media everywhere, is involved in it. Like, it's not America, if you Mm. know what I'm saying. Not Mm. all 12-year-olds are shaking their thing on TikTok. That advanced. And if you look at America compared to South Africa, like... America, 13-year-olds, I mean, that's probably the reason why. A multi-millionaires. Yes, that too. And there's so many teenage pregnancies in America. I don't know why. Lord yeah. only knows. But even here, there's a lot of teenage pregnancies. But, but I think we're a lot time, more conservative as, we a, are. as a country. We are. Yeah. At the same time, you have to understand this is not a 12-year-old with a 16-year-old or uh, a 13-year-old. Mm-hmm. This is a 12-year-old with a 34-year-old A grown-ass man. man. Mm-hmm. A whole grown ass man, and it changes the the dynamic completely. Also, these this man took this girl to his family's house. Was there no one in that family that could be like, "Hello, why are you with this young girl? What's going on here?" Like my uncles from the time I was young will be like, "Men are dogs; they only want one thing." Mm-hmm. Is there no one in that family that could have been like, "Excuse me, what are you doing? This is a child." Mm-hmm. I wonder how they found them though. Or if it was a family member that, like, called the cops. It was the family member. Uh, I read the article that says it was the family member. His family member. Mm -hmm, That alerted the authorities that they were there. Because at that point, they were still looking for them, remember? Yeah. These noodles are good. They're good, but they're spicy. Good. Where do you buy them from? (laughs) I bought them from Ting Tang, who I always (laughs) tag on Instagram. Hmm. But yeah, I literally had people in the DMs saying like, oh, she should have known better. I'm like, if you think about, think about yourself and think about where you are right now and what your age is right now. I don't know half of the things I know now, big at 25, when I was 12. Mm-hmm. Like you have to also take into consideration that what you go through 
what you experience in life, what you experience through through relationships, etc., only comes with age. Mm. Only comes with experience. She's twelve. What experience has she had? You know, twelve years on this earth. Exactly. So it's, it's it's very hard, and I think, not to generalize, but the Indian community is very very harsh on females. Mm-hmm. This girl, she's a baby, guys. This man is a grown ass man. Can I say ass? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this man is a grown ass man, and she's a baby, and yet people are still like she is at fault and whatever how how does that work how would you feel like sanishni said you probably don't have young people in your family so you don't know what it feels like but for me it hit home because my sister is 12 and i was like mm. no. and they babies they, they don't know anything they're playing around running living their best life running around with the dog here yeah <laughs> like you just really need to like put it into perspective mm. before you open your mouth and say stupid things like oh she needs a hiding yeah or or she should have known better than to go around with another woman's man. I mean, you need to put yourself in her shoes also. If somebody is telling, if somebody is giving you a safe space where you feel also, like mm, it's her neighbor. So chances are that the families were kind of close. So maybe mm-hmm. she even felt safe with this man. If you think about it in in our smaller Indian communities in case it in your neighbor is your family. Everyone. Your neighbor is your family. Yeah. I used to stay with my neighbor when I was younger. May he soul rest in peace. May her soul rest in peace also. I used to stay with my neighbors cuz my mom used to go to work. And so you wouldn't expect your neighbor to do something like that. Exactly. And I lived with amazing neighbors, but unfortunately this guy had other things in his brain. I'm just going to have a chip break. You can. <laughs> my lips are on fire. Yeah. Do you see the color of my lips have changed through the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through the actual They were pink when we started. Mm-hmm. Now they're red. How can you see that form? My eyesight is good. The twenty twenty vision. Everything is blurred to me, so it must be nice. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, but you know, give and take in life. I'm still single. You at least you got a husband. If you need a second pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah. So now, with wearing a mask when we go grocery shopping, I leave my glasses at home because uh, with the glasses and the mask, it's a lot. Yeah. So I stand there like for five minutes looking at the same thing, and then Trevino just comes and he takes the thing off the shelf. And I'm does like, he have good eyesight? He does. Okay. What do you think? this year has taught you the most um is it english i don't know no that that sounds appropriate um i think it's I that money is not everything at the bottom. yeah i'm oh, almost already yeah done. <laughs> i'm used to it oh. no. sometimes my sister will cook curry but too spicy and i'll be like this is not spicy my uh. sister's like cuz you eat those noodles that's why it's not spicy i actually thought i could handle spicy food but i think When I was younger, I used to like come home from school like grade two or grade three, mm. and make toast, and put butter on it with vinegar chilies and just chow it like that. So I think it ruined me from a young age. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, vinegar chilies. Oh god, I like vinegar chilies. You know what I don't like? Is some Indian food. It's just burnt. There's like no flavor. There's like, no this flavor. This has flavor. Yeah. There's. It's just a horrible burn. Mhm. Okay. One thing. The twenty twenty has taught me. Money is not everything. When you think about the fact that we couldn't work, mm. like I, I can, I can understand this from a freelance perspective because I didn't have income coming in consistently like I did before COVID. So, when you really think about it, it's like when we had to be at home, when we had to be by ourselves. Mm. Money was the last thing on our minds. Yeah. All we were cared about is the the health and safety of our family, family. Mm-hmm. our family members, especially the elderly. Mhm. And I think at the end of the day a lot of people put emphasis on like money and all these flashy things, mm-hmm. but when you are in a situation where you can't make any money, like all you are grateful for is your good health and the people around you and their good health. Not so, only when you're not making money, but mm. when everything is taken away. Oh, that too. What is your car doing for you? Mm-hmm. What is your flashy whatever you have? This year was literally about your physical health and your mental health. Mm-hmm. Everything else didn't matter. And I feel that- like my face is vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's wow. funny. Um but yeah, like you were saying, I think as much as we want the things, like we want our own houses, we want our own cars, and we want flashy things, but like 
when you can't go anywhere, what is it worth at the end of the day? So I mm. feel like we need to stop prioritizing like all the materialistic Material things. things. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's nice to have. It's amazing to have. But don't forget that you also need to have a relationship with your family, with your parents, because you just never know. Like life is so uncertain right now. You just never know who may catch COVID and then it's over. It's game over. Maybe the immune systems are not that strong. Yeah. So... I think it's put a lot of into perspective in that sense. And it's not from the weather. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yeah, I think for me also it was... Um, and I only realized this, I think, like last week. Oh my word, my tongue. It's like my tongue is leaking. Um, I realized that I have this thing where I want to be everything to everyone. I, I'm calling it big sister syndrome. What is going on? So I feel like I need to be the big sister to everyone Mm -hmm. and this year we've had four deaths and surprisingly enough none of them were due to COVID so we've had four deaths don't mind me I'm just trying to find you a spoolie it's fine to my eyelashes ah no you keep like doing this I don't want you to touch your (laughs) eye because I'm looking in here because there's a mirror and I don't want there to be like a snot on my nose while I'm talking to you because they fought away they won't be able to see we never know this camera is nice <laughs> i'm just gonna get you a spoolie sheet don't keep touching your eyes just now what if you touch the sauce yes mom <laughs> i'll have a snack break what was i saying oh COVID. yeah for me i feel like it's realizing that you can't be everything to anyone mm-hmm. um, blah, blah, blah. you can't be everything to everyone mm-hmm. so recently there's been um two very very tragic deaths that have happened not to my personal family, but close enough to have affected us. And the people that it has affected are people that I love and care for a lot. And being the way I am, it's just taught me that sometimes it's okay to love someone from a distance and to let them know that you're there for them. And just to keep the communication door open so that they know when they're ready that they can come talk to you. Mm -hmm. I don't always have to be there every single day sending a message because sometimes it's a lot. Sometimes... Going dealing with grief, you don't want someone to check up with you every day. Mm. Sometimes it's just too much. Like I know personally, I do a lot of things to just block and not think about my grandfather. Mm. <clears throat> and sometimes I do have to think about him because it's part of life. But I think just learning that you can't be everything to everyone. Because sometimes they don't want it, but it's also not healthy for you. Mm. It's not healthy for you to have the whole world on your shoulders. Because who's taking care of you? You're yeah. running around taking care of everyone. Who's taking care of you? And mental health is definitely a priority. Um, so, yeah, prioritizing your mental health and realizing that you can love people from a distance without being there every five seconds mm. in their face. That's so true. And I think last year, this time, I went through like a really bad mental health situation. So for me, when COVID came around, Yo. I'd already been through the worst. Were you still going there or were you also like just, yeah? Uh what do you mean like you were still like seeing your sister and them right oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 my yeah. parents also live in the same complex as us but at some point they were like it spread in the air so i was like okay i'm not gonna walk down and go see them because what if i get it and then they get it mm. so there was a time like and i think it was over easter mm. that we didn't see anyone we were just like sitting in our house only looking at each other but i'm happy that my parents live in the same complex as me so i could still see mm. them and then when things started getting like when the level started going down then we started seeing Trevino's parents and only recently we saw like aunties and uncles and stuff. Mm. So with my sister, obviously like the household is already integrated. Like I obviously need to go inside to cook food and all of that stuff. So the nanny didn't come for a while until obviously everything Mm. was a lot more settled. So we had to be in the house making sure we're doing things because my sister still had her full-time job. I still had my content to create on the side. And then I think a month into lockdown, brands started getting back into doing campaigns yeah. and stuff which helped a lot i think a lot of people were scared in the beginning mm. like everyone was like pause was marketing how are you gonna sell your stuff if you pause marketing and mm-hmm. like, the good thing is we had still online shopping so that helped <laughs> a lot <laughs> i'm sure it's, oh you mean for essentials like food also to oh. our detriment oh. pockets, i'm sure you've also done more shopping than you needed to i have done things to the house <laughs> so it's when restaurants like shut down we saved so much money and i was like we uber eats is the bane of my existence mm-hmm. so we've done a lot of things for our house during lockdown because That's we weren't great. spending money like every five seconds at mcdonald's and mm-hmm. Mama's. i think i also definitely saved money on takeout because mm. takeout's easy 
But then when it, everything's closed down, you can't really go in. And I think the problem with, with Uber Eats is mm. you're lying there on your couch. You have a fridge full of food, but you're too lazy to get up. So you just go on your phone, move your finger a little bit, and then there someone comes and drops off. You no, know, I hate what Mr. Delivery does. You go into the app. Mm-hmm. Just to check out something and usually I just go to check prices so I can tell my family what to order or like the menu to so I can tell my family what to order. And then like ten minutes later, did you forget something? Aren't you hungry? Like you don't you get those yeah. pop up messages and I'm like forgot to check out? Leave me alone. Yeah. Tell about Megan when she kept sending emails. Was it Megan from Mr. Delivery? Those automated emailers that Oh yes. Oh gosh, that was frustrating. But I feel like at the end of the day your mental health is really important and i think i was I actually said at the, at the beginning of lockdown when it was first announced i said this period is going to test a lot of our mental health yeah. because now we're not running away from anything mm-hmm. there's no club suite to there's run no away distractions. to there's no distractions you have to sit and deal with your and problems deal. yeah so because i dealt with my problems like a good six to eight months prior i knew that i had to constantly keep myself busy so that I didn't have like an idle mind to slip back into depression mm. or anxiety, you know. And I think in the second month, I started having like anxiety attacks because I was like, where's the money going to come from mm. to pay for my car installment? Where's the money going to come from to pay for insurance? Like it's it does get stressful at some point. Um, but luckily, as soon as my anxiety attacks almost started, it was almost instantaneous that brands were approaching mm. me more. So I was very lucky in that sense. And so it, it took a lot of pressure on me. And I think the less you think about all your problems, the less you're, the less likely you are to have anxiety and depression. And I think also affirmations is something really important. Like you shouldn't just practice it for mental health. Mm. You should practice it on a daily basis to for just life. like for your life in yeah. general, you know, the things that you want for your life. And I think another thing is we've also learned to just be grateful for the little that we have, especially in these times. So for us um, on that finance thing, we were grateful enough. Yeah. Uh, we're blessed enough that Trevino works at a company that could not close down. So they've all been working from home. We're still working from home. But it's a company that provides a lot of essential things. So they could not shut down. And he's been getting his full salary throughout lockdown. Whereas our parents, his parents own a car wash. Where were they going to get money from? My dad's salary was also cut. And my mother, my mother works from home. She's like an entrepreneur and whatever. So... Excuse me. For me, that was more stressful, like our parents. How can we help them? And lucky enough for us, um, Trevino was getting his full salary. And prior to COVID hitting, I went on a payment break for my car, I think it was, because I stopped working at Disney and I was freelancing and I wasn't sure, like, am I going to be able to make enough money? So I had a payment holiday on my car. And then COVID came about, so I took another payment holiday. So we were able to help our parents in whatever way we could mm-hmm. i think the one crappy thing though was um and i'm sure those of you who have attended one know a covert funeral is really rough mm. like can you imagine snotting and crying in a mask it's so bad it is nasty I and bad imagine. and you can't breathe and it's a whole drama and the worst part is you can't console each other so my 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 aunties were like all with my granny and whatever but no one can come like from the outside and be like, mm. you just have to look at you from a distance. That was really that was tough. Painful. I think the worst <clears throat> thing for me was my uncle passed away and watching his funeral on live stream mm. was just, I can't even describe the experience because it was just so heartbreaking. Like, I want to be with, with there with my cousins and I want to mm. console them. And I want to, like, you know, show them love and support in this time. But, like, just watching it on live stream and having to go through all the, like, the the the, the whole little ceremony. And they, obviously they had to make it a little bit quicker, quicker because of yes. COVID. And just going through the whole process, like, the and whole time. And not being there with not, your family. Exactly. And, I mean, it was here in Joburg. Lanasia, but I was just like, yeah. that's so heartbreaking. And one of my cousins couldn't go because she unfortunately had COVID. So she couldn't go and it. I can only imagine how it was for her siblings and her not being able to be there. Was that her father? Mm-hmm. Oh my word. 
Wow. They could not be able to say our last goodbyes and unfortunately they had a closed casket because of the COVID. I was just about to say maybe, I was going to tell you about my grandfather and say maybe cut it out in case people are sensitive. Mm. So for him, it was open, but they had like a glass thing covering. Oh. So it's like you can't even like say bye properly. Mm. And the garland and everything was like on top of that thing. It was, it was, Yo. it was crap, but I it mean. Was, it's so sad. I guess in a way, I can see why. It was a lot better for us to have a quick funeral because you know, especially with Indians, things drag and you you there for you like you will faint at the funeral. Yeah, you That's will be there bad. for years. That's how bad things tend long. to get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess that was the one good thing about having like a COVID funeral was that mm-hmm. it's quick. My sister and I were sitting there watching it on the project. <laughs> Was he crying? Like ugh, it's honestly like yeah, it's so sad. And then when you hear. The, they luckily still had like speeches and stuff on the live stream, which I think was amazing. So after they took him to the crematorium, they just said a few things. And some family members like sent in paragraphs. So then one person would read from who the messages were from. But I can only imagine it was so difficult for everyone to deal with. Yeah. And yo, I even watched this video. I don't know if you've seen it. But there was this video where somebody died in in somebody passed away in um durban and the hearse literally drove up to the house and they literally lit i think the person had covid that's why it was that way but there was people in white suits and then they had to perform the last rites and they literally lit a camphor behind the vehicle they they lit it they threw the water they did you know the the, The, a quick thing and they had to say goodbye and this auntie was hysterical and i looked at that video and i was like that breaks my heart on so many levels that you can't say goodbye so yeah i feel like it's so important for us to just keep sight of what's really important at the end of the day and not worry too much about and things yeah things like material things come mm-hmm. and go yeah your loved ones you don't know how long you have them like they could money can always be made yeah. your parents cannot be made lives cannot be made and yeah we just need to prioritize i think uh, in also, Joburg we hustle a lot yes and we don't have time we don't have time for anything yeah. sometimes something weird and i only realized this at this last really tragic death that i was talking about this eyelash mm-hmm. okay i know like space on our phone is a problem mm-hmm. but don't delete photos like i was looking for a photo of this person that passed away and i know i had it, it was like a group selfie but i think because I didn't have space at the time. Mm. I deleted all the photos with him in it. And I was so annoyed because the one photo I have of him, you can't even see that he's there. It's like you can just see his shirt and whatever. So I was really, really upset about that. So don't delete photos, guys. Put them on like a hard drive. Put them on your computer or something. Mm -hmm. Just don't delete photos. I feel like when you're concentrating on something else, the burn goes away. Yeah. (laughs) In the beginning, it was really bad. Maybe I'll suffer later. This is the only photo I have of him. Oh, man. How does it feel having 20,000 followers on Instagram? It feels surreal. It's like, do I really have that many people following me? Oh, how does it feel to have 20,000 Someone, I, I went live the day that like it happened, like a few mm. followers before. And someone was like, congratulations, you're famous now. And I'm like, that's very weird. I don't think I'm famous. But people do recognize us. and Yeah, I think a lot of people think from the outside looking in that we're famous and we probably get recognized like easily and like we go to places and everybody just knows who we are. Yeah. I always assume people don't know me. Me too. Just because I like, prefer it if people don't know yes, me. Yes, same. <laughs> so because it's not it's, awkward. Also, we are, we may seem like extroverted on camera, but I think we both have very I different personalities. I think it's our job Yeah. to be extroverted on camera. That's I don't true. think anyone wants to see us like quiet and in our own world. Yeah, that's true. I mean, in my element, I'm like, happy vibes with the people good. that you know yes definitely but like yeah. if i'm by myself if i'm in a shopping mall like i don't want to talk to people i, I just want to shop i just want to get my stuff done you know some people at the malls will just talk to you out of a way so one time we were shopping at spa mm-hmm. and i don't care how rich you are or how much money you have you're gonna look for bargains so i was standing there i think it was in front of the chickpeas and i was looking for what chickpea was like the cheapest can mm-hmm. and i was going in i'm like no you know stop taking the expensive stuff take what's this it's the same thing it's both chickpeas one is cheaper than the other mm. and this girl kept walking past me and i'm like okay i don't know it's weird then she comes to me she's like hi i just wanted to say hi to you and i'm like oh shit she's probably gonna think i'm such a cheap ass i was just here bargaining for chickpeas you know it's weird like that yeah. but we also like real people at the end of the day yeah and that's why like anytime like people anytime there's hate comments i always like remind my following i'm just like you yeah 
there's nothing different. I may have like a whole bunch of people looking at me on a daily basis compared to normal people. But we're still human and we but still we're have still feelings. But we're still human. We still have feelings. If you mm-hmm. say something, it still hurts our feelings. And a lot of people will say, oh, but you know, you're on social media. You expect you should expect it or you should be better prepared. Nothing will ever prepare you for a hate comment or something that's nasty. Like it just hits differently. I feel like people also say that about a Meghan Markle. And I saw something that she posted. Oh. Well, not she. Mm. That they posted about mental health. And everyone's like, yeah, but she got married to a royal. She should have known what to expect. No. Never. Kate Middleton didn't get treated like that. Yeah. If you're in love with a person, it doesn't matter, like, whether they the prince of wherever. You just, mm. you love them. It's not like you go into a marriage like, okay, this person's going to hate me. I'm going to be judged for wearing dark nail polish. I'm going to be judged for not wearing stockings. That's weird. It's not fair that she was also compared to Kate. Kate. Like, that's not no. fair. You don't compare people. You are a whole different person. You're your own person. Definitely. Um, your favorite comment you enjoy getting in general? Um, oh. oh, I need to do more Monday motivations. It's on the <laughs> motivational content that I post where someone is, is like, um, thank you, it helped a lot, or you've made my day. Comments like that where it shows that I've actually added value to your life or to your mm. day, those are the ones that mean the most. I have a feeling that I was not looking in the camera this whole video. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Um, mine definitely has to be, um, yeah, when I post helpful content or just content that I'm insecure about talking about, like stretch marks and acne scars. And I did a video on like my chest acne. And to be honest, I was very nervous and I was I had like a little bit of anxiety like posting that video because I was like, I don't know how people are going to take this. There's not many people that show their chest acne mm. on social media. So... The fact that so many people were like, oh my god, thank you for making me feel normal. I was like, oh, that's all I want people to feel like is normal. When you come to my page, I just want you to know that like normal people, normal problems. Don't yeah. be out here feeling like there's a level of perfection or aesthetics you need to achieve because that's not realistic. I also on Sunday, let me see if I can find this girl. I found a video by a YouTuber and she was just talking about how the influences sometimes that you follow online and I'm not talking about South African influencers. I'm talking about like international influencers and celebrities. Mm-hmm. Stephanie Lang, oh, Langer, Lang, whatever. Lang. Lang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she was just talking about how we compare ourselves to influencers. And she was even posing and showing like, this is how you pose and you look snatched and sexy. And then this is me in real life. And for the longest time, my body gets toned quickly. Like my arms, my back and my calves get toned really quick. But my tummy just never leaves. I always look like I'm a few months pregnant. And that's just, it is what it is. I can eat clean. I can exercise. I can cut out gluten. I can cut out carbs, whatever. But it's just the way it is. And I feel like I need to get to that point of where I'm comfortable. Because everyone's like, oh, you look so nice. I wear a lot of high-waisted stuff. And I always suck in my tummy if I'm sitting in a position where you can see it. So I feel like... I am not at that place that you are at as yet, mm. where you can be comfortable in talking about things like this. Well, now I just did. Yeah. But I feel like I've also started unfollowing a lot of unrealistic body goals mm. because a lot of people have money to do surgery and get surgery done and just pretend like it's natural. It's mm. not natural. It's not. A lot of us have tummies or have jiggly thighs or someone in high school, a teacher in high school told us... Um, as females, you can only ever have cellulite or stretch marks. Here I am with both and I'm like, what's wrong with me? And then I found out that that teacher was talking nonsense. You can most definitely have cellulite and stretch marks mm. all together on one body. So, definitely. and one time I was wearing, I like to wear shorts. I like my legs. My legs are nice. My knees are weird, but my legs are nice. <laughs> and someone was like, oh my gosh, you have cellulite. It must be that marriage. And I'm like, what? I never had a problem can with my cellulite. Can we normalize cellulite. cellulite though? Like I never can had we? a problem with it. So why do you have a problem with it? Mm. I still wear shorts. I don't care if you see my cellulite. I have a normal body. Same thing with my stretch marks and uneven t- yeah, skin tone. I, have I don't marks. care. You can look at it. You can stare at it. I don't care anymore. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Yeah. Also, um, Stephanie Lang said something on one of her videos. She was like, celebrities don't even look like themselves. Mm-hmm influencers don't even look like themselves and there's so many pictures where you can compare side by side when a paparazzi takes their pictures versus, versus when, when they, they post yeah. and you'll see such a big difference you guys and another in thing texture is, in pause yes, in everything in everything there's so much of photoshopping going around on the internet another thing is 
I read somewhere the other day, somebody posted on their stories and I reposted it to mine and they said that having belly fat protects your internal organs and your womb. Yes. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with having belly fat and we need to normalize having belly fat. Even influencers suck their stomachs in yeah. and if I really, if I starved myself the whole day and I didn't eat not one stitch of food, I probably would be able to look like I had a flat tummy. I think the one influencer that I really can say started making me feel a little bit normal mm. is Shyla. Like mm. this is Ellen S. Like when she started speaking about how her abdomen is like split after yes. giving birth and she yeah. shows her stretch marks and she shows that after you have a baby, your tummy is not perfectly flat mm. again and looks normal. There's going to be some lumps and bumps and some stretch marks. Mm. You produced a human being inside your body. It's normal. So okay. even though I haven't produced a human being inside my body, I think that her, by her showing that she doesn't have a flat tummy and it mm. is angles and you can still have like a normal stomach and whatever mm. makes me feel better. And yeah, you're protecting like your organs. Yeah. Somebody actually said to me that the gynecologist said to them that it ha actually facilitates um, your body to, to function better, like your reproductive organs to function better if there's a layer mm. of fat protecting your organs. You have a lot of layers of fat. Well, same. <laughs> Honestly, I like when she said belly fat, I was like, but your belly fat, like her, be her stomach always looks like flat. Look. Oh, same. <laughs> same. Our uh, tummies look the same right now. You can't but see it, but I it's fine. We can see I it. think usually she's probably always sucking her tummy yeah. in, which is why I feel like your belly always looks flat. I'm always like sucking it in in my photos. <laughs> but also yeah. she's taller than I am. So I think your body, your fat also like it has just a larger, <laughs> just, no, it has like a larger surface yes, area. Yes, I was looking at my tummy the other day and I'm like, Trevino, I have like quite a big stomach and it's like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, there's like a lot of skin and like, it's a it, large it's surface a large, area. It's like a long torso. Yeah. I feel like when you're short and tall, like your torso <laughs> like varies in length. Yeah. So I feel like your, your fat is probably hidden behind like the, your long torso, whereas I have a short torso. You can easily see the fat, you know. Did you watch that video on TikTok and I didn't know this? of a c-section of all the layers that they take out i've heard of it but i didn't see that video so they they the it's a gynecologist and she had like different layers of fabric and they just show like how many layers they need to go through before they like get in there and take the baby out and i was like that makes me want to stay chunky just so that i was like what i can make sure i don't have a c-section i'm scared can i be honest i'm terrified of having a c-section delivery wait I was also like that until multiple friends of mine have said, rather have a C-section than natural birth because maybe TMI, you can rip from your vagine to your butt. Yeah, because apparently you can rip like all the way from one point of entry to the next point of exit. Here's what, <laughs> here's what maintains the fact that I think I would rather have natural my gran had 12 kids oh, wow. not one was a c-section all were natural mm. her sister had 11 kids nine i like nine kids not one was it 12 and nine <laughs> that's 21. yes none of them had c-sections none of them had twins can you imagine in 21 kids none of them had mm -mm. but one of those kids had twins that gives them. me a headache natural Listen, okay, here's the thing. Remember that your body is well equipped. Exactly, but also naturally. I'm scared. <laughs> okay, but there's simple ways to maintain that your baby's not going to be too big. Like, don't overeat. Because a lot of women feel like because they are eating, they, because they're carrying a baby, they need to eat for two. It's, That's not necessarily eating for the one case. Person. You're still eating yeah. for one person. Your body can only take so much of food. But if you overeat, obviously your baby's going to be a little bit on the chunkier mm, side. Which is but they're cute. I know be cute uh, when you give them breast milk <laughs> but obviously there will be complications where your child would need to come out yeah i think whatever is best for the baby at mm. that point but i don't think i can natural birth just seems very scary but also another easy thing with natural birth is you can get an epidural but, but like apparently it's not the same after like your situation is not the same after how did our grandfathers make 12 kids if the situation was I not don't the know. same after? Okay, but then, maybe then, the pleasure was only for the men. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't think they cared about the... Why? Where is this conversation going? I don't think that it was focused on the female being pleasured sexually. Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, so... But I just... Yeah. Okay, your body is well better equipped 
to give birth naturally through the door it was meant to come out through but i feel like if you start doing things that are unnatural for your body unless your child is in a position where they have to come out through the sunroof yeah they cannot come out <laughs> the through the sun door room. <laughs> Then I feel like it it has to be that way. Yeah. But I feel like as far as possible women just need to be pro natural. I would like to give birth naturally one day, but just the the story of ripping and the story of being it being hard to go to the bathroom. Yeah, in any way, number 1 or number 2, that just kind of makes me nervous. But I it I obviously it depends on what's the best for the baby, but I think I am very chicken. and i would rather be knocked out cut take it out <laughs> i actually want to be able to have like skin to skin with the baby as soon as the baby comes out of my body because that's another thing that's delayed when you have a c section like you can't have skin to skin with your baby maybe it's all these movies i watch where everyone's like ah! oh also you can shit yourself while giving birth yeah that's why no! they encourage you to go to the bathroom at least to clear your bowels <laughs> no yo But the one thing that I do know for sure is my husband will not be standing anywhere in this vicinity. No, he, he must, must be, be here. here. Yeah, he must not Don't be. Don't be anywhere. traumatized by those things, please. No, 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 no. Wow. I was watching a Spanish movie on Netflix the other day and it was about three different couples and the one couple was having problems like being intimate. Mm-hmm. And the lady was trying everything like dressing up and making date nights and whatever and the guy was like it's hard for me because i see you as a mother and because of where our children came from and she was like what you hate me because i gave birth to your children that's rough don't ever say that to a woman no <laughs> don't ever say that at the same oh. time i'm just like men is just stopping wussies and stand there no i don't no, not no. not stand there <laughs> but like Don't overthink it to such a level where you're going to be like I see you as a mother like yeah. get over yourself you made these babies dumbass. where did they come from yeah wait did I you make them myself the sky? it's so crazy but yeah i think i always say unless it's unless my child's life is in danger i would like to go the natural, natural. route i think honestly i'm scared because i've heard like the same way you've heard natural birth stories i had a lot of where they leave tools inside the woman no no not even that i've heard very like scary like cesarean section stories where like the stitches will open up and oh my word okay, the fact know. that they have to take your organs out your body yeah and to come like on your the tray womb. there and then yeah put them back in what if they put it in the wrong order i think also so, there's going to be a mother on here that's like i think you need to worry about actually having a child rather than child birth yeah, that's but true. that's it It's, it's part of having a baby and it's stressful guys it's stressful it for us even though we're not pregnant it's very stressful for us i think i, I think at the end of the day once we do eventually do get pregnant i think the only I thing think we would worry about in it. i think the only thing you would worry about also is the health of the baby the of you the wouldn't baby. care about like yeah. where it's coming out from whether it's a sunroof or wherever <laughs> that that i feel like you worry about in the last two weeks of yeah. pregnancy but yeah don't judge us guys mm. It's scary guys. I don't know scary. how everyone does it and like pops babies out. And your body changes and then after the baby all your organs need to find their way back to their original position and then there's this chick that I follow on Instagram. Did you ever watch Jersey Delicious? Mhm. You know Tracy? Mhm. So she had three babies like consecutively consecutively after like one after the other whatever. Mm. And I think she did it in a space of 3 years. So she'd give birth, like she'd be pregnant, fully pregnant mm-hmm. at one child's first birthday. So the doctor said like the last pregnancy was very high risk because her body hasn't had time to recover. Mm-hmm. Cuz like imagine your body like expands all your organs like move, there's a baby and then it needs to come back and then you're like no 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 I'm not done and then it comes back and you're like I'm still not done and mm-hmm. you need to come back. It's It seems very stressful. Have you watched the episode of the Kardashians where Courtney just like Yep. There there. Mm-hmm. How do you Listen. Here's my thing. If Kylie Jenner can give birth to Stormy. <laughs> why the door it was supposed to come out through. <laughs> Us normal people can do it also. Did you watch are you watching the new season? Mhm. Did you watch the episode of the fight? I don't get about the full the full thing but I just hear I watched um you know on YouTube they yeah. have a small shorter version. I watched the episodes on YouTube. And um I think Kylie is a brat. Like it made me see her in a completely different light. I was like, "Ooh, mm-hmm. no." That's what I'm saying. If somebody 
as Instagram perfect as Kylie with the Instagram body who we know she's done her body duh if she can do it we can do it too mm-hmm. the baby came out she's fine she don't well she's not with it mm-hmm. she's not with the baby daddy anymore <sighs> but that's what happened Mm-mm. when you have a baby young it be a risk sometimes mm. also yeah. a lot of my friends say they wish they had children younger and here I am I'm like mm, closer to 30 maybe why though why don't they wish they had kids younger they say you bounce back faster yeah. and you can also you have more energy to like run around with your child and stuff I don't even have energy now I'm 26 I don't have a child I don't have energy I where just am I getting know, energy for a child where do y'all think I'm gonna find a man to have a child young <laughs> maybe he's watching that's just video. not on my cards I honest genuinely I don't think getting married in my 20s is on the cards for me it's I fine think there's no there's no there's no rush timeline to when shit should happen oh i keep saying shit people think shit is a swear word to me shit is not a swear it's word. not a swear word <laughs> i don't think it's a i was word. actually thinking about the first collab we did and when you showed me my makeup and i was like oh shit and i was like i shouldn't have said that because it sounds like i didn't like it but that's just i like say shit a lot She's, uh, all the time yeah since <laughs> i know you've been I saying say that. <laughs> yeah but yeah i just think right now it's fine like there is no pressure who said you must get married before 30 yeah, Unst. who said? Just because our parents were married at like 23 with like five children. And Trevino and I were talking the other day, the age that we are at now, when our parents were our age, we were already six years old. Mm. How how can I have a six-year-old at this age? I can't even take care of myself sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm not in the mood for life today. How, yeah. how do you take care of a full-on person? That's crazy. Like I look at my niece and nephew and I'm like, when I have a kid, I want them to have the same experience I did. So I was like 14 and 16 when they were born. So I got to be a part of the process of taking mm. up, taking care of the baby yeah. and feeding the baby and just learning how to be like, like baby friendly and learning yeah. how to take care baby of kids. Friendly. <laughs> so I want to give them that same experience. So I don't think them being 9 and 11 that I'm ever going to be close to ready to having kids. But maybe and, it's better than that when they're older because mm. they can do stuff. Because you know they also say it takes a community, a village to raise a child, which it does. Because you'll notice, like, whoever is around you, like, your children become, like, a version of yeah. those people. So it has to be good people. Like, sometimes my niece will say, it's va- like this. <laughs> it's vibes. And I'm like, ah, where did you learn that from? And you, she'll be like, she'll just look at me like this. <laughs> and I'm like, sometimes I don't know where you guys... Her niece, I feel like, and I only saw her for, like, a few minutes here now can hear her talking i feel like she's a mini you uh, she's a mini you the way she talks the way she just like she's a mini you definitely it's so cute yeah she is so sweet and then my nephew will also be like just they're also the very polite things. children yeah they're, they're very polite sweet. They are. when he saw me he was like uh <laughs> yeah they just get taken aback uh, but they're so sweet they like bounce back fast they're not like yeah. awkward kids which is great he's yeah. very cute he was running around playing with the dog yeah he has lots of energy god exactly now can you picture yourself at this age running after children how must we do it later on in life i don't know you see now that the good age where i can like literally be like can you guys sit and watch like something yeah. on the tab or something then they'll sit and they'll watch like they listen now yeah imagine running after someone you're trying to discipline like on top of the things that we have to do as content creators so we went to i think it was last year trevino has friends that are older than us and they have children and stuff we are the young ones in the group and we went to one friend's children's birthday party and the other friend was there with their children. So while the adults were e- adults, like I'm a child, while the parents were eating, I took the one child away to let the parents eat. And I took her up to like the trampoline to play and stuff. And at some point it was getting really hot and I needed her to come back to like where the party was happening to put mm-hmm. sunblock and a hat on. And I'm like, come with me, baby. And she was like, no. And she just kept jumping. And I'm like, come, let's go. Let's go see mommy. Let's go see daddy. No. And she just kept jumping. Trevino comes there, she's like, let's go now. Okay, I'm like, ah. I wasn't going to be rude to this child and say, Guys let's go now. Always like and that. he was like, let's go now. And she's like, okay. And she just went, like, I've been asking you for so long and you didn't want to come. I feel like I'm not strict enough. But also, I don't want to be like, that's not my child. I'm not. Mm. But also, it wasn't like rude what he said. He was just like, yeah. let's go now. And she's like, okay. But... I feel like girl kids, they push their, they push yes. their buttons. Oh, yes. They oh push women's word. buttons. But men, as let the men. Yeah. You know, girls, girls like are two different variations. They either have their father wrapped around here yeah. 
or they will only listen to men they will never listen to women what type of parent do you think you'll be <sighs> i i feel like i'm a little old school where like you you're allowed to be a part of the conversation but don't speak out of mm. turn is my thing so i think i would be Not partially punching, traditional yeah. <laughs> partly modern because i still want my kids to be comfortable to come to me and say you know mom i'm dealing with this or somebody yeah. touched me inappropriately i still want to have that that thing with them but it's just where cuz sometimes the the respect lines can be blurred yeah especially when you're trying to give your kids what we never had growing up because yeah. us we had to Openness. be seen not, not heard. heard so when you're trying to you still need to maintain the respect but they just mustn't overdo it yeah because i think sometimes kids can think something is appropriate to say but the way they say it and the tone they say it in is just not appropriate yeah especially when you're with other people when you children don't have a filter no. they'll just say what they're not supposed to say they all the like, time Bleh. yeah i think i will be like what you said but i think from trivino and i i think i'll be the strict parent but mm. i just i like things a certain way yeah i like i just like order and structure so i think i will be the strict parent mm. and i feel like trivino will be the fun parent that the children like <laughs> i As feel like they're here already i feel like i would have been the strict parent but you know like i think i have a lot of uh, I think that mm. thing was there. I have a lot of experience with like my niece and if you're rolling my lip balms all the way up and then putting the cap on. So, I mean, I guess when I was younger, I would entertain her and be like, that's my new lip balm. Yeah. But now I'm just like if something falls or if something breaks, I'm just like I think I'll just fine. be very strict. Like um I I hope my mother is not watching this, but I had to give my sister the talk, but not like the talk about sex, but the talk about whoa. like you have a phone now mm. this is what sexual predators are like i had to tell her all those things and my heart was beating so fast and trinos like you have to tell her cuz you know we love our parents but you know your parents aren't going to tell them like mm. they're not necessarily going to say everything right mm. and i was like oh i don't want to do my this my sister actually has the these books on raising oh no, i need these books please. raising girls and raising boys so it's separate books and it basically helps you help them them by describing their body, describing what happens, describing all the normal things that happen in life. And yeah, I think if our parents just sat down and had like a conversation, a conversation. Wait, where did you learn about sex from? Cuz I learned about it from school. And it was weird cartoons that they showed us in LO. From school. Yeah, from school. But they we, we didn't even get showed cartoons. <laughs> we just got told the human anatomy. Actually, I was in university studying anatomy. I think it was my second year and we were approaching the reproductive system. and we had a very crude lecturer like he was just disgusting the way he would describe the specific section i was just like can you ever like sound yeah. can you sound more sexual while describing this like it, it just was ugh, like it was just not a vibe but then i was like i up until my early 20s i was just like you and then i was like wait that's how i was made <laughs> yeah ugh. i feel like i no one spoke to me about stuff mm. like you had to learn it from school i think we started doing sexual thing is like learning about that in grade 6 in alo mm. but not like in depth like when a woman hits whatever age she's in puberty and the breasts start to form mm. blah 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 it was random weird cartoon yeah. that they used to wheel out on those oh, big ass oh, yeah. tvs <laughs> yeah. yeah those was, box tvs good old days and then i think in grade 8 or 9 we had our ns teacher show us slide shows of stds and that traumatized me because oh. one was like cauliflower and i was <laughs> You know, by BT Dubs never Google blue waffle. Stop it, don't Google it. <laughs> I, I say don't. I see, don't. If you discuss it, that's not my problem. Blue waffle. <laughs> I don't even know. You are disgusted. If it's going to work cuz the Oh, thank God. It's a literal blue waffle. Am I doing it wrong? Oh, yo, what? It there was not such nice pictures when I googled it years ago. Blue waffle disease. Oh, what the heck is that? I told you. Oh, what? Ah, ah, close the it tab. Looks so, it's ah, so bad. Ah, oh my gosh. Yeah. I was I was following somebody who said they wanted to be a gynecologist and then they were like Google blue waffle then you understand why I don't want to be a gynecologist anymore. I wanted to be a gynecologist but my marks were like ha ha ha. So, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. crazy but 
yeah i think a lot of like our parents need to have these conversations yeah. with us and i mean my parents would definitely not have these conversations <laughs> with us with you me. have older parents right cuz you like the baby yeah i am yeah i think how old is your mother 64 yeah her parents are the same age as my grandparents i think my parents are the age of your maybe your brother your brother's the eldest no my sister my yeah. sister's 41 my mother is 46 so i think she's yeah yeah interesting <laughs> it's crazy but even my sister didn't have the talk with me i don't i felt like she probably also felt like oh well, i felt awkward talking to my sister i was like this is yeah. weird this is it's so crazy. weird wait why is that uh that series is it called blood and water yes i watched it the south african one yeah are yeah. you not scared that our kids will end up like that Remind me how were they? They were like oh yeah sneaking out and stuff. Sneaking out, having affairs. No, I will I will beat my child. Yeah. I will whack you so yeah. hard. You won't know what hit you. <laughs> I don't play games here. You will not be running a mock. Yeah, I will give my children hiding. Not like beat them up, but they will Yeah. Yeah. I'm also scared of that because I have quite big hands. No, I feel like I would discipline like I like I can't hit my niece and nephew. So I don't think I would able, be able to hit my child. However, if you test my patience, I might just give you one flying back and I won't know where it comes so, from. So, you know I was telling you that we had to go for premarital counseling mm-hmm. and they were like talking about a whole lot of things. So, um I don't know how we got to the topic of disciplining children and the pastor said the hand is so easy to just hit your child, but mm-hmm. also your hand is associated with love. Oh. So, don't hit your child like with your hands. Like rather use like a stick or wooden spoon or whatever or throw not don't throw something but mm-hmm. like discipline them with a specific thing mm. and in a specific place. Mm. So he said like he won't just hit his child like in the lounge or at the people's house. He'd be like okay after this when we get home we need to go to I think he used to hit them like he used to hit them or the sand raf like mm. in one area like like the bathroom or whatever. Mm. So, you know, it's one two on the bum in the bathroom and then out. Uh-huh. And it's not like I don't love you. It's I'm disciplining you and afterwards when you've realized what you've done, come to me, we'll talk and then hug afterwards. Mm. I don't know if that's going to work all the time, but I think the thing that was very like stood out for me was don't hit with your hands and do it in one place only so they'd not like emotionally traumatized yeah. or whatever. I think that's a good thing. Also take away the things that they love. Yes, cell phone bye. Ooh, Netflix bye. iPad bye. Yeah. Watching TV bye bye. Peace. Mm-mm. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like it's children are easy to discipline. You just have to be in tune with what their favorite things are and then just take away that thing the moment they start acting up. Yeah. So when yeah. I was younger, I didn't have things to take away like I used to run around in the garden. Mm-hmm. But when I was a teenager, my mother used to take my phone away. Yeah, I used to always yeah. have my phone taken away. Me too. Not not necessarily because I was badly behaved, but because of school. I think they always would be yeah, cautious about us having school having our phones and exam time. Did you ever phone. hide mix it in like the gallery or in some other folder where they would Oh, my brother <laughs> heard the the sound and he deleted my mix it. Uh, he was right in the room. I went back and I deleted it. <laughs> I mean, and I re- reinstalled it. <laughs> oh, I was wow. like, this man has mixed it. He's uh, deleting my. But imagine you know, the most dangerous thing on the internet back then was mix it. Oh. Wow. That's so crazy. That is so crazy. But yeah. We've had a good mukbang session, a good chatty session. I hope you guys yes. have enjoyed. We're going to leave pretty much everything in. I think it's a yeah. lot of things everybody needs to be cognizant of and think about. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us on this chat session. If you guys would like us to have more of these, let us know. Comment below. Yeah, and we'll get it done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to slay all day every day with Avila makeup. Don't forget to follow Selina on her channel as well. We did a shoot or drink. Shoot or spill. You just said the same thing twice. <laughs> I was like I'm pretty sure I did a shoot or spill video on her channel and yeah we'll talk to you guys in the next one